Good morning, Vinyl community. It's Steve again. Wait, with you again. Um, with more of his latest finds. This is volume 20, so that's a bit of a landmark. Um, before I go any further, I'd like to give a big shout out to my new subscribers. Um, it's David Young and Simon Beswick. Beswick, um, forgive me if I um, pronounced that incorrectly. Uh, it takes me up to 21, so I think not bad at all. Not bad at all. Happy with that. Um, uh, the week's been good, uh, you know, I'm enjoying the weekend, um, this week coming up I'm off to the Robin T in Bilston to see Soft Machine Legacy, supported by my birth experience, oh, really uh, that's who I'm going to see, it's my niece's boyfriend's band, they've just been recording their debut album the last two weeks and they're just in the process of putting that together, pretty excited about it, so I'm looking forward to listening to it in the new year. So, without further ado, these finds, again, mixture of charity shops and pound bins. Um, and there's some surprising choices at the end. So, first up, Simple Minds, Street Fighting Years. This is the album from 1989. Um, this is probably reached at their commercial peak. It's got Belfast Child on it, Mandela Day. Um, and pretty much towards the end of the 80s is, I mean, I saw them on the tour, um, pretty much a band that's on there, really was on their peak, at their peak at that point. Um, so, you know, they're still going. In fact, I was listening to their new acoustic album yesterday, uh, which, was, which was not bad at all. It was quite pleasant. Uh, I think, you know, it's good that the bands are still going, so happy with that. Sister Sledge, We Are Family. I've seen this mentioned a few times in the Gimme 10 series, in the Gimme 10 1979. Um, some will say this is really where she could at their peak, um, production wise. They produced the album. Um, yep, it's got all the songs, the best like known tracks on there. Yes, they did have a number one hit single in with Frankie afterwards. Though I did see they got a bit of a battery in Sister Sledge, they appeared on um, X Factor um, uh, a few weekends ago, and I, I never watch it, but apparently they got a bit of a slate in the, the voices aren't what they what they once were, so it's a shame. Um, but great album, you know, a great album, a great period piece really of that dance disco era. Um, very easy to knock it, but there was some good music. Though I would differ about with it being Sheik's best production, I would go Sheila B. Devotion Spacer is the best thing they ever did. Smokey's Greatest Hits. Now, Mike Chapman and Nicky Chin, Chin Chap. Uh, riding high, writing hits for Sweet Mud Guitar. Um, but they wanted something to represent, they were quite into what the Eagles were doing. And they wanted a band, put together a band that reflected this. And Smokey were this um, very popular tour to late, late, mid to late 70s. Um, and some, some good songs actually on this. Uh, okay, we've got Living Next Door to Alice, which is sort of been taken out a little bit with the stu students with the refrain in, in, in the middle of the chorus. I'll meet you at midnight. Um, you know, lay, lay back in the arms of someone. You, you can see where they were coming from. It's very soft rock. Um, Chris Norman, lead singer, did have a, I think, a top twenty hit with Susie Quattro. And they're stumbling on. I think. I think that's what they were on. So he's known in America. I don't know how popular Smokey were in America, but um, yeah, on the Rack label. Um, good, a good album for what it is. It's got all the hits. It'll keep keep you going. This wasn't from the pound back, back um, bins, but I was glad I found this. Jailbreak, Thin Lizzy, um, the big breakthrough album, and some would say their best album. Um, it's got Jailbreak, it's got the big hit single, Boys Are Back in Town. Um, cowboy songs, such, an, such a great 
great song because it evokes such an image, um, an emerald, um, to of course at the end of the album. Um, I think Phil Linnett's, it, just, it, it all comes together, this album. Um, and yeah, it's, I've just been reading, as I said, read his autobiography, read his biography. A little bit it's sad, isn't it? Bad luck stopped the Nizzy get breaking America, really breaking America. And there would be injuries or band members leaving. Um, yeah, and they'd be prevented from really, um, you know, really taking advantage of this record. And then John Bon Jovi is a, a massive fan. So, but it's a classic, if you, you know, I'm going to say classic album. It is, it is such. Next up, Rattle on Hum, Volume 2. I was glad I found a copy of this. Um, again, this was, this wasn't a charity find, but you know, it, it, it wasn't a charity find, it wasn't a pound find. But it, you know, it cost me a few quid, but happy to pick this up. Not played great. Um, sort of the soundtrack to the film, um, which sort of features for season touring uh, the US in around 1987, support the Joshua Tree. The album that broke it broke big worldwide. Um, I love it. I think you know, "Bullet the Blue Sky" is just as, on here. It's just an absolute corking song. It really hits out. I don't know. With events that happened the last few the last few days, whether that is um, still going to ring true, "Silver and Gold," um, their version of "All Along the Watchtower," "Helter Skelter." Uh, and the, and the Angel of Harlem, their, their song they recorded with BB King. And it also featured their first number one UK single, Desire. Uh, it's a great album. You know, great documents up that time. I sort of closed the period for them. I mentioned a few videos back about Steel Pulse's Hands of Revolution and the argument, which is the best. Um, um, British reggae album, and the other, I suppose the other argument is this album, Signing Off by UB40, the debut album, is that, and, and I still will prompt towards Hands of Revolution, but this is such a strong album. Um, King, Proof of Thought, the, the, the breakthrough single, double A size singles on here, got a, a 12 inch as well on the album. This is the top of the top, Madame Medusa and Strange Fruit and Reef and Madness, 12 inch single on here as well. Tyler, another song on the album, it's such a strong album. And it's such a straight state statement to intent, it's just a shame. I think how the band sort of progressed really. Coming up. I've also got Present Arms as well, which was their, their first album for they, they signed to on Epic Stroke Dep International, which was their label, which they were given. But around that time, not down signed the big labels, we were actually given their own label to um, sort of like as a vanity project. Um, one in Tens on here, which is great, again, great track, not as good as signing off. Also included on here, I think we've got a 12 inch single, which was sort of like the last single they put out for gra Graduate, which was a double A side, Earth Die Screaming, and Dream A Lie. So, really good. Um, again, not as good on a signing off, but yeah, it was still a good album. As I said, I just think the direction they went. And it's very easy for me to crit criticise. You get you find a form that makes you successful. The truth, the truth is, you're gonna st you're gonna stick to it. So um, they're still going. You before it's sort of split up into two camps, really. Well, Ali Campbell left. Left. He kind of sat, and it's sort of, it's sort of sad how it's broken up. And I know the rest of the band. I think went bankrupt, which again is sad. Um, but you know these things happen. 
this one is a rescue from the charity shop. Make way for Dion Warwick, and this came out in 1964 on the Play International label, mono recording. Uh, on here, House is Not a Home, a version of that. Um, it's, uh, wishing and Hoping, which I think Dusty Springfield had a hit with. Um, yeah, good little album. You know, Dion Warwick uh, at that time. Um, you know, it's, it was still writing sex, particularly in America, with the odd hit in the UK, in a way to San Jose and everything. Uh, that's a good album. Soundtrack, My Fair Lady, um, from the Philips album. This is from the, I think, from the Broadway show. Um, based on My Fair Lady, based on the George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion, Rex House and Julie Andrews, who played Eliza Doolittle in the original stage show. For some reason, I think she never ended up, didn't get to appear in the film. Audrey Hepburn did, but she wasn't her singing. I think it, I can't remember who her brother was, but no, she just recently passed away. Um, Stanley Holloway, everyone's favourite Cockney, uh, or American <laughs> favourite Cockney. Um, yeah, it's okay. I've um, never actually watched my fair lady at all. Um, but it's interesting, interesting piece. Good performance there. So, you know, it's fine. Now, to a close, I rescued four albums that you were donated. We're going to get chucked out. Now, in the mid 60s, there was a series called Living Shakespeare, which was they put abridged versions of Shakespeare's plays onto vinyl records and also included with your record. I think you got your record every month, you paid a subscription. You got you got the booklet which contained A the, the script for the record and also then the complete play. So and you had all sorts of that. So all sorts of famous British actors at that time appearing. So in Hamlet, we've got Michael Michael Redgrave. He played Earl Hamlet. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Valentine the Half of Ghosts. Um, he also played the play King. So it was like an ensemble piece. So we had Hamlet there. We had Henry V with Richard Burton playing Henry V. Um, one of the finest voices, uh, recording voices. Um, Nigel Davenport was on here. Who else? I'm trying to think. Frank Williams, if you know, um, Are You Being Served? Um, he, play, he played uh, Gower on here. Uh, Massey played Catherine. Um, so you've got Henry V. Merchant of Venice, which you got Peggy Ascroft as as Port Portia, the Lady of Belmont. Harry Portman plays Shylock. Nigel Davenport plays Antonio, the Merchant of Venice. Um, Annette Crosby plays Jessica, daughter to Shylock. Um, yeah, so you got that as well. And then Othello, which I don't have the book clip for. And that's got Ralph Richardson as Iago, um, John Gilgood plays Othello. Um, yeah, curious time pieces. And actually, according to Discogs, it's worth a little, some, it's worth a little bit of money. It's worth more than um, what we were offering them at the charity at the charity shop. Um, yeah, so quite a unusual way to end this batch that the like Shakespeare plays. So. Hope you're keeping well. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Click the subscribe button if you haven't done already. Likes, comments, always welcome. So until the next video, which will probably be out sometime during the week, take care, keep smiling, keep playing the record.